welcome to Vanderbilt. Anchor down. Anchor down. Hello, this is Coach Corbin. Welcome to Vanderbilt and Anchor Down. Welcome to Founders Walk and to the class of 2024 and our newest transfer students. Welcome to Vanderbilt. We are so excited to have you all here and to welcome parents and families to Founders Walk. My name is Vanessa Beasley and I am the Vice Provost for Academic Affairs and the Dean of Residential Faculty here at Vanderbilt University. If for some reason the Zoom link cuts out, students can link to a secondary feed on the Vanderbilt homepage. During the taping of various segments, acceptable social distancing procedures were followed. Today you will hear from key administrators and campus leaders, including your Vanderbilt Student Government President, your Chancellor and your Provost, and several others. Each speaker will bring their own perspective to the meaning of this special event and to the importance of this moment as you embark on your time here as Commodores. Over the course of today's event, you will learn about Vanderbilt's history and campus landmarks, including the Commons, where I am today. You will also discover more about the unique culture and values that set us apart, especially during these historic and unprecedented times. And of course, you will receive advice and well wishes for the exciting years ahead. To that end, I will share some quick advice of my own. Whether you are connecting virtually or in person, I hope you truly take the time to get to know each other. Take time to learn from and to listen to each other. You may not know them now, but the other people watching at this very moment with you tonight will define your Vanderbilt experience more than you could imagine. This certainly includes our outstanding faculty members who do so much for our Commons community. And they've worked especially hard to create an engaging and special start to the year while also abiding by our safety procedures and protocols. With that, let's get started. We'll begin today's program with a few words from Vanderbilt Alumni Association Board President, Tim Warnick. Hello Commodores, my name is Tim Warnock and I'm the President of the Vanderbilt Alumni Association. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the Vanderbilt community. Your beginning your Vanderbilt experience as Chancellor Deermeyer starts a new era as our ninth Chancellor. He's a visionary leader who embraces the university's values and is prepared to move it forward at one of the most pivotal moments in its history. I know your excitement about your journey is tempered by the reality of living in a world changed by COVID-19, but you've already proven yourselves to be resilient. You understand the value of pulling together for the greater good of everyone in your community. And I wanna make sure you know that Vanderbilt has an incredible alumni community. We're all Vanderbilt for life and ready to support you. There are more than 145,000 alumni around the world who represent a wide range of backgrounds and perspectives. The network includes CEOs of major companies, scientists, social and tech entrepreneurs, film producers, doctors and nurses on the front lines, and other leaders in nearly every industry. They develop their leadership skills, living and learning from each other right here through Vanderbilt's core values and inclusive, supportive culture. When I talk to graduates, they often tell me how they discovered a new passion through their Vanderbilt experience. For some, it became their career. For others, it's a hobby they still enjoy to this day. So as you begin your journey, I would like to share the advice I've learned during my 35 years in this community. Seek out two things at Vanderbilt, passion and purpose. These two will often intertwine. Your love of community service and marine biology may take you on a service trip to Ecuador. Your interest in business may lead to an internship with one of Nashville's growing companies. 
My point is that the possibilities for personal growth and exploration at Vanderbilt are endless. Keep your mind open to new experiences. The things you learn about yourself may surprise you and they will stay with you for a lifetime. So take advantage of all that Vanderbilt has to offer and make these years the greatest of your life. Next up is Veer Shaw, your Vanderbilt Student Government President. Thank you, Mr. Warnock, for that introduction, and hello, Class of 2024, transfers, and Next Step students. My name is Veer Shaw, and I'm proud to have the opportunity to serve as your student body president this year. Now, if I'm gonna be honest, I did not think I was gonna address you like this. Although I'm not facing you all in person today, I can say without a doubt that every event, good or bad, will help in writing your Vanderbilt story. With that, I wanna spend a little time sharing a part of my story with you with some advice I learned along the way as a washed up senior. So people think I'm a pretty extroverted and successful, and according to the most beautiful person on earth, my mom, a handsome guy who's loved here his time here at Vanderbilt. But before I get to the good part of the story, let me share the first chapter. Chapter one, first year. A lot of people love their first year at Vanderbilt, but for me, it sucked. Why? A few reasons. It seemed like everyone else was connecting while I just fell out of place. Adding to my stress was a fear that, as a first generation college student and a child of immigrants on a predominantly Caucasian campus, my peers would not accept my differences or appreciate my struggles. Interestingly, I had been an extrovert my whole life. But even when I tried to search for friends and extracurriculars, I still failed to find my place, which led to the second reason I didn't like Vanderbilt. I thought I was a failure. By the end of my first semester, I realized that I had performed poorly in every single class I was taking, and I was involved in zero campus organizations after trying out for six throughout that semester, including running for my Commons House president and losing. Shout out to Hank House. I reached a point mid-semester where I considered transferring, but I decided to stay, and that is one of the best decisions I have ever made. Now looking back, I can't help but to think I am so proud to stand here in front of you all, virtually. Before we go into chapter two, I think it's important to know that I kept it to myself that I had a really bad first year, since I've always been known as a person talking to people or smiling all the time. You might also struggle and compare yourself to others, but remember, no matter how good someone's highlight reel looks, we all have our own struggles and our own successes. On to chapter two, the turnaround. Surprise, surprise, it did get better. Starting my sophomore year, I took control of my own narrative. I started building good habits and appreciating the best parts of Vanderbilt. I finally started to get to know my professors and realized that some of them were actually really cool people. I started to care about my physical and mental well-being. I took advantage of resources provided by the University Counseling Center and Center for Student Well-Being, and I learned a lot about what I would have found helpful during my first year. So I'm gonna try my best to give you three important pieces of advice that I hope help make your college experience better. First, ask for help. As we're all now navigating the unexpected, it is especially important for you to know to ask for help and to know that there are people who want to support you. Reach out to a student leader if you want to learn more about how to get involved. I wasn't involved in VSG until the end of my first year when I sent an excited email that I thought was kind of weird to the incoming student body president at that time to grab coffee. Go to office hours. The connection and the experience you have with your professors take you way further than the grade you get in the class. Even in your toughest moments, there are people here who want to support you and make sure your experience here becomes what it should be. All you have to do is ask for help. Second, expect the unexpected. Just like this pandemic, there will be many parts of your college experience where things don't go as expected, both good and bad. However, if you let go of your expectations of what the year was supposed to look like or what your college experience should look like, then you can embrace and make the most of what it is. And that means take advantage of opportunities in unexpected places, even if it means staying up some nights till 4 a.m. having Zoom conversations with your virtual floor mates or taking advantage of online events like Zoom baking classes or changing your major junior year for the sixth time or realizing you don't like brand cookies. Joking on the last one, that won't happen. Third, invest in people. Quite frankly, Vandy has some pretty awesome people. For me, some of my closest friends and mentors have been anywhere from people I've met on alternative spring break trips, to dining workers, to professors, to security guards, to people I just met when I crossed them up in basketball at the rec. A professor once told me you should never wait to reach the destination before making an impact on the journey traveled. And I agree, most of you will only be here for four years and you should take the time to invest in our Vanderbilt community during your journey. 
Challenge ideas, support your friends, listen to their ideas, go to their events, share each other's Instagram posts, and celebrate each other's personal victories. We all have ambitions and want to go places, but remember, in one way or another, you dreamed of being here. So why not leave here with the largest impact possible and help each other reach our goals? All right, I'm almost done. Last chapter. Chapter three, TBD. I know this might sound a bit anticlimactic, but even though I'm a senior and I've been able to experience so much and discover so many of my passions, I finally know that I don't know what I want to do. Seriously, I have no clue what I want to do after college, but that is okay because I know that I'm going to graduate with certainty that I've invested as much as I could in myself and in our community. And that I also know that I have so many people, including you all, to help me write this next chapter. And that might even include finding me a job. Please help. In conclusion, without the experiences I went through my first year and in between now, I would have not been able to share my experiences with others and provide a platform of inclusivity, mental health, and transparency. Your college story will include all elements of a story, climaxes, conflict, rising actions, falling action, and at the end of your four years, after using your three tools, asking for help, expect the unexpected, and invest in people, you will be able to write a narrative to tell others after you. And once you appreciate the story, you stop caring about the details. You will fail and you will succeed. But at the end of your college years, you will have written a beautiful story. And who doesn't appreciate a few good plot twists here and there? Thank you. Next along the path to Alumni Lawn, I would like to introduce Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Susan R. Wente, another person I encourage you to get to know during your time at Vanderbilt. Thank you, Veer, for the kind introduction and your leadership as president of Vanderbilt Student Government. You and your peers have done an excellent job keeping our students informed, engaged, and inspired during these unprecedented times. To the class of 2024 and our newest transfer students, welcome to Vanderbilt. We are so happy to have you here. As you can probably tell, Founders Walk is a beloved tradition at our university. It represents our shared future as we come together for the first time as scholars and friends. It also celebrates our nearly 150 year history, our campus and beloved landmarks, which you will see footage of today. Behind me here is Kirkland Hall, one of our most iconic buildings, which also houses my office and those of the chancellor and vice chancellors. As your provost since 2014, I've been fortunate to participate in Founders Walks, this now being my seventh time. Traditionally on this day, nearly 2,000 first year and transfer students gather for a procession around our campus. The walk culminates on Alumni Lawn, where students converge with a cheering crowd of university leaders, faculty, staff, and Vanderbilt Upper Division students. This year, the warm welcome will manifest differently. But I hope you know, on behalf of our entire community, we could not be more excited for you to join us. We might not be walking on a physical path, but I hope you will still take a minute to envision your own road ahead. At this moment, at the beginning of your time at Vanderbilt, this will shape the rest of your life. Over the next few years, I hope you are guided by discovery. Discovery of knowledge, discovery of your potential, and discovery of what you can contribute to the world. I also hope you connect your own ideas with those of others and look out for one another in doing so. Some of you are watching this from campus while others are studying engaging with your classmates remotely. Despite the many changes and atypical circumstances that we will all experience this year, the core of our mission still resonates. We are one Vanderbilt and we will move forward together. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Vanderbilt's ninth chancellor, Daniel Deermeyer, who will speak more to the importance of this day and this extraordinary year ahead. Thank you, Provost Venti. And to all of our first year students, families, and friends, 
Welcome to Vanderbilt. My name is Daniel Diermeyer and I'm the Chancellor of Vanderbilt University. Founders Walk reflects the welcoming culture and values that make Vanderbilt distinct. And as Provost Renty said, this year it marks the beginning of a pivotal new year unlike any other. Your experience here at Vanderbilt will be guided by our shared and unshakable belief in the power of human potential. Though so many things about this year will be different from the past, what will not be different are the goals of your educational journey. A journey that has been traveled by generations of Vanderbilt students before. First and foremost, you will receive an empowering education that deeply enriches your capabilities and will help you develop the habits of mind that will serve you for a lifetime. This means, among other things, learning to recognize and evaluate various forms of evidence, challenge your own and others' assumptions, effectively argue your position and be convinced by a better argument, grasp both the power and limitations of different points of view, appreciate and recognize both the power of data and when judgment needs to go beyond the data. In arguments, you will learn to confront complexity and uncertainty and the need, in many cases, to leave behind the temptation of simplicity. To synthesize different perspectives, to understand that context and history matters, to think through unintended consequences, and to take account of change, trade-offs, and uncertainties. Armed with these skills, you will be prepared to lead in a world that is increasingly complicated and where solutions defy easy answers. You will be exposed to new ideas, perspectives and modes of inquiry that may question your deeply held beliefs. And you will be asked to provide compelling reasons for your point of view, but also be willing to persuade it by others. These are critical capabilities and skills, but developing them is not easy. It is a journey made worthwhile in many ways, not just because of the joy and success that it promises, and it does bring that, but because it will ask you fundamentally to dig deeper than you ever have before. An empowering, lasting education must be challenging, but its value is profound and enduring. And that is the kind of education you're now undertaking here at Vanderbilt. Secondly, you will be part of a community based on common values and guided by a strong culture. Vanderbilt's cooperative and collaborative culture is central to who we are. In research and innovation, breakthroughs happen when fields intersect and when different ways of thinking interact. As someone who has been a student, professor, researcher, and administrator at several other universities, I can tell you that Vanderbilt's spirit of collaboration is special. It will introduce you to new perspectives and approaches. It will show you that the greatest challenges can only be solved by a diverse and committed team working together. And it will expand your understanding of what is possible when people of different backgrounds pursue a common goal. We believe in one Vanderbilt, one community of students, faculty and staff committed to a common purpose and united by a common culture grounded in shared values. Among these values is our commitment to a diverse and inclusive community. Diverse backgrounds, experiences and points of view are essential key to our ability to unlock the power of human potential in all members of our community. This is an endeavor that we as an academic research institution dedicated to knowledge and discovery are uniquely positioned to pursue. It will be natural for you, when everything is new, to reach out for what is familiar and connect with students who look, act and think like you. But challenge yourself to go beyond what is easy. Get to know people who are not like you. Make friends with fellow students that see the world differently and learn from each other's differences in background, experience and perspectives. We believe in the diversity of diversity. Don't let yourself be pigeonholed. Experience belonging in new ways and most importantly, learn to disagree without enmity. And finally, Vanderbilt provides itself on educating leaders for tomorrow. Our alumni have led the way and now it is your time to step up and become leaders of your own. This calling is more important than ever because you're beginning your Vanderbilt career at a time unlike that this university or any other has ever known. And more than ever, the world needs your ideas, talent and energy. Things will be different this semester, but there will also be new precedents to set and new opportunities to see. 
Coming together this fall in person was not the easy path. We chose this path because we believe that it was required to make good on our promise to deliver the transformative education that you seek and to do so in a way that protects health and safety as much as possible in the face of the pandemic. Because the essential endeavors that we face in life, those that help us grow, those that require the most of us are never easy. They're always hard. They're always demanding. It is these times of challenge where we show our best selves. It is in these types of challenge and others yet to come for which your Vanderbilt education will prepare you. You and I and our faculty and staff chose to be here this semester because we know that our mission demands it. As John F. Kennedy said when explaining the United States decision to go to the moon, we choose to do these things not because they're easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one that we're unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. Now in 2020, our challenges are great and our responsibilities are many. But what gives us the determination to give them our all is optimism, friendship, camaraderie, hope, and joy. As you learn and explore, you will also be creating deep and lasting friendships that could sustain you for a lifetime. These coming years will shape your lives and build memories. Memories that will comfort, nurture and strengthen you for many years to come. Seize this time and enjoy each moment, for this is the time in your life to invest fully and completely in your growth and development. This is the time for each of us as Commodores to anchor down and step up, to make a difference in support of one another and the entire Vanderbilt community. Let's make this year one that we will all look back as our proudest moment. I couldn't be more excited and optimistic about what lies ahead. Welcome to Vanderbilt and anchor down. I would now like to introduce Melissa Grisalfi, the Dean of the Martha Ingrams Commons and a professor in the Department of Teaching and Learning at Peabody College. Good evening. Adding to what others have said tonight, I am so thrilled to be welcoming you to Vanderbilt. I hope you feel very welcome by this point because we are so excited that you're finally here. While it has been quiet on campus this spring and summer, it has not been slow. These months have been characterized by an intensity that I haven't before experienced, an intensity entirely focused on the task of designing a totally new experience for our incoming students. In so many ways, the Vanderbilt you are joining is the same institution it's always been, a place with incredible resources and opportunities, a university characterized by its commitment to academic excellence and the work of building a welcoming and inclusive community. But of course, in many ways, this year's Vanderbilt experience is different from any version that has come before because of the ways we've grown and changed to keep our community healthy. One obvious change has been brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, as many of our practices and routines have been transformed this fall to keep all of us as safe and healthy as possible. But our community is also changing in response to the acts of violence, racism, and anti-blackness across the nation. Acts that launched so many protests this summer and which have prompted us to re-examine and reform the institutions and practices that we are part of. This is a unique time, one that we will always remember. And in that way too, things are the same as ever. Because for all of us, the first day, first week, first year of college is imprinted in our minds. We all remember these first moments vividly because these are emotional times. As you may know, the things we remember most vividly and most readily are events that are associated with heightened emotion. This day, this week, this year will be filled with these moments. These memories, feelings, experiences, and impressions are important because together they connect to the fabric of the stories you and others tell about yourself, your identity. Identity is something you'll be hearing a lot about in your time at Vanderbilt. Our identity is a question that we pose to ourselves and to each other routinely through what we say and how we act. Who are you and who do you want to be? Your identity is not revealed through discovery and introspection, but rather it develops through your actions, decisions, and commitments. This is an important point. You become you through your experiences in the world. And who is the person you mean to be? 
The reading for this year's incoming students, Dolly Chugs, the person you mean to be, invites us to consider that question over and over again. Dr. Chug asks us to become aware of what we notice, who we value, how we act, and finally, how we can be the builders of change. What is new this year is that change has to happen collectively. We cannot operate under our same model of individualism. We must focus on the collective. In wearing masks, we protect not only ourselves, but others. In examining our own behavior, we seek not just to become a better person, but to work towards a better society. Becoming aware of our own awareness can be challenging, but I know you're up for that challenge, and that's why you've become part of the Vanderbilt community. Here, you will meet people who are different from you in every conceivable way. And in this new community, thinking of yourself as the curator of your own identity might help you to think a bit more strategically about how you spend your time. Rather than always doing what's comfortable, perhaps you might also choose to do what's new. Instead of doing something that seems likely to lead to success, choose something that has a risk of failure. Instead of gravitating towards people who look, talk, and act like you, find someone who might surprise you or challenge you. Here at Vanderbilt, you have many opportunities to challenge yourself to become the person you mean to be. You have so many people here to help you become that person your classmates, your professors, your mentors. And at the start of your journey, the faculty heads who work to build community as part of residential colleges. In just a moment, I'm going to introduce them all. One of the things I want you to notice is not only their individual accomplishments, but also their collective expertise. This incredible group of faculty works together and shares a commitment to creating a set of experiences that helps you to develop into the kinds of productive human beings that we are proud to call friends and to support you as you encounter the inevitable challenges you will face. I can't wait to see who you will become. Douglas McMahon, faculty head of Crawford House, Stevenson Professor of Biological Sciences. Dr. McMahon's research focuses on biological clocks, the innate and internal clocks that time our physiology and behavior. Current projects in his laboratory seek to understand how our internal daily clocks are set by light signals, how disruption of these clocks is linked to mood disorders, and how honeybees use their internal clocks for navigation and time memory. Professor McMahon completed his undergraduate and graduate studies in biology at the University of Virginia and a postdoctoral fellowship in neurobiology at Harvard University. He came to Vanderbilt in 2002 and is currently the director of the undergraduate neuroscience program and co-director of the NIH Vanderbilt Mark Diversity Program. His wife, Maria Pintane, is a faculty member in Spanish and Portuguese since 2010. Doug, Maria, and their golden doodle Toby welcome you to the Crawford Hive. They are looking forward to getting to know each of you and to a great journey together in community, diversity, discovery, and learning. Elizabeth Meadows, faculty head of East House, associate director of the Robert Penn Warren Center for the Humanities, and senior lecturer in the Department of English. Elizabeth Meadows develops undergraduate and immersion programming and projects in public humanities at the Robert Penn Warren Center. She brings to the Commons considerable experience from six years at Vanderbilt's Curb Center, where she developed programs that engaged faculty, staff, and students in creative projects and collaborations with our campus and local community. Dr. Meadows earned her doctorate at Vanderbilt and her bachelor's at Columbia University. And in addition to teaching at Mount Holyoke College before coming to Vanderbilt, she's also worked in New York City's fashion industry and public school system. Dr. Meadows' programming at East House is known for its strong community building through sharing fellowship and stories that highlight how learning, working, and talking together can transform everyday experience in our communities. Frank Dobson, faculty head of Gillette House, associate dean of the Martha Rivers Ingram Commons and director of the Posse Program. Dr. Dobson is an author of books and plays, most recently, Rendered Invisible, Stories of Blacks and Whites, Love and Death. He is a leader in the African-American communities of Vanderbilt and Nashville, and one of Vanderbilt's most respected teachers and mentors. He also teaches at nearby Fisk University. 
Dr. D is an active participant in community service and activism. He designs and hosts amazing gatherings for Gillette House that offer opportunities to engage in discussion, listen to poetry readings, view and discuss films, and of course, Gillette's weekly event, Gillette Gelato. Edwin Williamson, faculty head of Hank Ingram House, assistant professor of psychiatry in the School of Medicine. Dr. Williamson divides his professional life between a clinical practice as child and adolescent psychiatrist, administration as program director of the Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Fellowship Program here at Vanderbilt, and academic pursuits in the field of graduate medical and psychiatry education. Originally from New York City, Dr. Williamson now lives in Hank Ingram House with his wife, the Reverend Melissa Smith, and three boys. Hank will be celebrating their amazing community through talks, hangs, and exciting bonding adventures, exploring where you come from, what you're doing, and where you're headed. Dr. Williamson is always up for talking about and learning about what you're reading, streaming, following, and listening to. Celso Castillo, faculty head of House of Memorial, associate professor of history, affiliate faculty in Latin American studies. Celso Castillo's research and teaching are focused on the histories of slavery and emancipation and the ways that these histories have shaped politics and popular culture in the Americas. His first book analyzed how the process of abolition in Brazil changed the ways that people participated in politics and, therefore, understandings of citizenship. He is at work on a study about the circulation of Uncle Tom's Cabin in Latin America and on another project that takes a comparative look at the black press in the 19th century. Born in Sao Paulo, Brazil, Dr. Castillo was raised in Los Angeles and grew up speaking Portuguese and Spanish. He moved to Nashville in 2008 with his wife, Dr. Jessica Castillo, an assistant professor of medicine at UMC with a specialization in infectious diseases. They're excited to be a part of the mix in Memorial, almost as much as their children, Louisa and their twin four-year-olds, Jack and Paulo. Their dog, Chansey, loves barking at squirrels. If initially without the s'mores, Professor Castillo is looking forward to getting to know students around the fire pit every Wednesday night. Alyssa Hasty, faculty head of Murray House, Cornelius Vanderbilt Professor of Molecular Physiology and Biophysics, Associate Dean for Faculty in the School of Medicine. Professor Hasty's laboratory team focuses on understanding how obesity increases risk for diabetes and other metabolic diseases. Dr. Hasty completed her PhD at Vanderbilt, her postdoctoral work at Tokyo University, and joined the faculty at Vanderbilt in 2003. Dr. Hasty has been married to her high school sweetheart, Alan, for 29 years. Their daughter and son-in-law, Allison and Chase, were both Vanderbilt athletes and are now proud parents of two beautiful daughters, Ava and, El and Elsie. Yes, Alyssa is a grandmother. Professor Hasty is very interested in wellness in both her professional and personal life. Murray residents will focus on who they are becoming, not just what they are studying while at Vanderbilt. Natasha McClure, faculty head of North House, associate professor of nursing. Natasha McClure, her husband, Matt George, and son, Carter Hopper, have enjoyed being part of North House since joining the Commons community in 2018. Dr. McClure is a pediatric nurse practitioner and faculty in the School of Nursing, where she teaches in the Primary Care Pediatric Nurse Practitioner and Doctor of Nursing Practice programs. She developed a model for improving chronic disease management in children with asthma that seeks to provide experiential learning opportunities for students to improve patient outcomes. She's also involved in global health education opportunities for nursing students in Central and Latin America. As faculty head of North House, she focuses on developing residents' awareness of self-care and creating a culture of care with the idea that every resident shines brighter together as a community of students who support, respect, and value one another. Roosevelt Noble, faculty head of Stambaugh House, assistant dean of residential colleges, Senior Lecturer in the Department of Sociology, Director of the Bishop Joseph Johnson Black Cultural Center. A scholar of the American criminal justice system, the courses Professor Noble teaches focus on prison life, criminology, and deviant behavior. In addition to his book, Black Rage in the American Prison System, he also has publications pertaining to racial disparities in incarceration sentences. He's actively engaged in social justice advocacy work through his involvement as an executive board member for the ACLU and the Nashville Community Bail Fund. 
He initially came to Nashville in 1994 on an athletic scholarship as a member of the Vanderbilt football team. As the rare triple door, he has served at Vanderbilt in various capacities for the past 24 years and is a highly regarded mentor among students. Professor Noble resides in Stambaugh with his wife, Dr. Kristen Noble, a neonatology fellow at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital, and their two beautiful and energetic children, Jordan and Roosevelt III. Shalene Helmuth, faculty head of Sutherland House, senior lecturer of Spanish. Professor Helmuth grew up in Costa Rica. She teaches Latin American literature and Spanish language courses and is the author of two books on contemporary Latin American literature and culture. Professor Helmuth's research interests include narrative and identity, developing cultural competencies in study abroad context, and sustainability in tourism. She has designed study abroad programs in several Latin American countries and serves her department as the graduate advisor for professional collegiality. Professor Helmuth works closely with student leaders to design events that nurture their intellectual, social, and global curiosity. Sutherland's signature event is the Cafecito, which invites small groups of people to come together and get to know one another. Professor Helmuth is married to Dr. Christy Halbert, a visiting scholar in the Department of Sociology and an Olympic boxing coach. They live in Sutherland with their daughter, Ella, who is a sophomore in college this fall. Christoph Zeller, faculty head of West House, professor of German and European studies. Dr. Zeller's research focuses on literature, media, culture, and society. His projects explore the nature of values, the notion of authenticity, the idea of experiments in art and literature, and the future of collecting in the digital age. He has lived and worked in four different countries, speaks several languages, regularly leads study abroad programs, and encourages students to celebrate cultural differences. Professor Zeller loves his role as a faculty mentor and is excited to support students in their efforts to grow personally and professionally. He and his daughters, Marlo and Eva, along with their cat, Juniper, will do their best to make West House a fun place to live, a hub for new ideas, and a refuge from the demands of academic life for the class of 2024. Thanks again to all of our speakers today and to all of you for joining us. We will now hear from the a cappella student group, Melanated, who will perform the Vanderbilt alma mater. Following today's event, please be sure to check in with your individual house through the link provided for the very special event, Community Creed. There is so much to look forward to, and I'm excited to get to know all of you better. Anchor down. One, two, three, four. On the city's western border, red against the sky, proudly stands a Roma martyr as the years roll by. Oh, whatever be thy watchword, conquer every day. Hail to thee, O Roma. Cherished by thy sons and daughters